Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at our next addressing mode, which is going to be called absolute addressing. Okay, this is, we're starting to get a little bit more advanced here because we are now going to start accessing memory, specifically data memory. And so the way that this works, absolute means you are gonna provide the hard-coded address of where you're going to grab information and where you're gonna put information. And so this, it's, it's not used a bunch. You'll see why, <laughs> you'll see why you don't use this a lot of the times. Uh, but you have to actually know what the address is. So if you're going to go to data memory and grab a word out of it, you have to actually know what the address is. You have to know by looking at the, the data sheet that data memory starts at 2000. <clears throat> and if you're going to put it into another location in memory, you have to know the exact address of where it's going to go. Okay, so that's what at absolute means. So in order to tell it, though, that or denote absolute addressing, you have to put an and percent in front of it. And that's because you're gonna provide a number and it needs to know that the number is not an identifier of, of something else. You have to say, look, I'm gonna provide to you a hard-coded address and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it very clear by putting an and percent in front of it, okay? All right, <clears throat> remember, now we're, we're using uh, addresses, so a lot of these are gonna be hex characters. And so if, it, if your word, starts with a uh, with a hex letter, you gotta make sure to put a zero in front of it, okay? Um, let's see, let's look at this first. Absolute can be used in both the source and the destination. So this is actually kind of neat, is this allows us to move information from, uh, from an address location into another address location, but you can also mix and match. So you could conceivably move something from an address location into a register, and you could move something from a register into an address location. When we start messing with uh, <clears throat> with memory, we now need to start going and either putting information into memory, data memory, or also uh, reserving data memory. So we get to start playing around with the directive dot data, which is gonna allow us to basically start setting up variables in data memory. So this is kind of exciting, okay? All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Our challenge here, we're gonna do a little example. And data memory starts at 2000 hex. What I wanna do is I wanna go out to 2000 hex and I wanna initialize the value one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna do that by setting up a constant and I'm gonna use directives to do this. I'm gonna do this using the dot data directive and I'll show you how to do this. Well, that's what we're doing, right? And then I also wanna put at 2002, the hex character or the hex value cafe. And then I wanna write a program where I copy those values into the next two locations in memory. And I'm gonna actually go ahead and use another directive to reserve these, which is the dot space directive, okay? So let's walk through how to do this. So this is the challenge before us. We're gonna initialize two, and these are these are initialized during download, and then I'm gonna reserve two, okay? All right, so let's fire up uh, Code Composer Studio. And I'm gonna go File, New, and then File, New. Oh my, File, New, what is going on? Keep it steady. CCS project. All right, check that the MCU is correct, it is. And I'm gonna do ASM, and then I'm gonna do, uh, let's do a descriptive name here. So we want ADDR MOD3 for the third addressing mode that we've looked at. And this is absolute, okay? Come down here, make sure it's empty assembly only project. If you ever accidentally leave it on this, you'll see a main.c. You'll know right away if you mess up, uh, and then you just gotta delete your project and start over. Okay, so here we are, and we're sitting here, and life is good, and we're gonna put our program right here. So as always, let's just get our label set up for the, the main loop. Uh, and so that's gonna make an infinite loop right here. And at this moment in time, we now need, let's go set up our memory, okay? Um, let me see if I can have this on the screen. Should be able to. So that's what we're trying to set up right there. Okay, we're trying to set up, uh, that situation in memory. Okay, so we're trying to set up one, two, three, four in 2000 <clears throat> and cafe at the next one. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna do one of these uh, little comment headers <clears throat> and make it very clear what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste that. I'm actually gonna put memory allocation. Okay, 
Okay. All righty. And now let's go down here and I'm going to use the directive dot data. And what that does is it is going to do say go to data memory. And that's what tells the assembler that everything that I'm going to do right now should go into data memory. Okay. I have to use a different uh, directive too called dot refrain. And then <clears throat> what it what it does is remember I was mentioning that the uh, the assembler will run an optimization algorithm and it'll notice that we're doing kind of a stupid program where we're just, you know, we cr download some constants memory and then we copy it, but nothing ever goes to the outside world. So the, the, the assembler will actually remove everything <laughs> and it's kind of a pain because we're trying to see the information. We know this program doesn't do anything. We're just trying to do it to learn. But if you don't put that dot retain, it'll, it'll like delete everything. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to put, I'm going to call the first thing. I'm going to give it an address label of constant one. And so now this is an address label and this will be at 2000 because dot data said go to data memory, which starts at 2000 hex. And so if I do const one, it is going to set up a label there that is const one. Okay. And now I'm going to use another directive called dot short, and this will set up a 16 bit constant, which will be downloaded to address 2000 when I actually download my program. So this will be one, two, three, four hex. Okay. And then let's do another one called const two. And this is dot short dot short is going to be a 16 bit word. And now I want to do cafe, but remember cafe needs uh, a zero in front of it. So these two directives set up constant one, two, three, four hit hex. These are going to actually download information into data memory at these locations. And we'll watch it in the debugger. Now I want it. So that's what I've accomplished these two right here. Okay. And that it, remember, it happens at download. This is, these are not instructions. Now let's reserve two words of memory at 2004 and 2006. And let's do this bar one, one, and I'm going to do dot space and dot space says, how many bytes would you like to reserve? And that's now let's do another one called var two dot space and then reserve me two bytes, please. So this is reserve two bytes. OK, now here's the here's the challenge of ad, of absolute addressing. I needed to know, even though I did address labels, I needed to know exactly where data memory was. So this is I knew that it was at 2000 H because I looked it up in the data sheet and I know that this first value will go at address 2000 then everything after it is going to be packed in right next to it. So then the next thing that would be loaded is cafe at 2000, uh, 2000, and then cafe will be at 2002 hex. And I had to keep track of that. Okay. So I had to know where my address started, data memory started, and I needed to know exactly how I was allocating all this. And then this one is going to be at 2004 hex. And then this one will be at 2006 hex. I had to keep track of that. So it sucked. It's it's not, I mean, it, it works, but it's just, you have to keep track of it. No one likes keeping track of stuff. So <clears throat> let's go up here now. And here's what I'm going to do. I am going to move. So the whole goal here is to copy one, two, three, four hex at address 2000 into 2004. Uh, and here's how you're going to do it. I'm going to say move dot h or excuse me yeah move out w sorry and i want to go to address remember i have to put ampersand for absolute addressing i'm going to go 2000 h okay and let's move it into r4 first just so we can watch it okay just so we can watch it even though i know that i can put it in there directly and then let's go move w from r4 into ampersand 2004 H. Okay. So this is going to be copy contents from 2000 into 2004. All right. Now look at what I did. I went to address, absolute address 2000. I copied the content contents into R4 and then I took the contents of R4 and I copied them to 2004. If I then wanted to do the same thing with the next uh, address, which is cafe, I would have to do move.w and I'd go to absolute address 2002, and let's move that into R5, 
and then let's do move dot w r5 into ampersand 2006. Notice I'm, I'm having to keep track of all this stuff. Okay, so let's let's just comment that. So copy contents from 2002 into 2006. Okay, there it is. Uh, let's take a look and let's run the debug session. So we're going to go ahead and hit debug. It's going to assemble it. It's going to link it. It's going to create the executable object file and it's going to download it. And then I'm ready to roll here. And I want to see what's in my register values, but I also want to see what is in memory. So now we're going to have a situation where we want to look at the memory viewer. Okay. All right. So as always, let's come down here and let's go ahead and put a breakpoint right here. And then we'll go ahead and run to it. So let's go ahead and run to that. Okay. So now we're sitting here. Nothing has really happened. I've got my memory browser up over here. And if I don't have that, if it doesn't pop up automatically, go view memory browser. And what I want to do is I want to go to 0x2000. Okay. So I go down here and look at what happened here. If I scroll down and look at my data, my directives, dot data said go to 2000. And it knew it was at 2000 because of the linker file. And I set up 1234 and cafe at address 2000 and address 2002. And then look at what happened at address 2004 and 2006. It actually reserved it, which means it cleared it out, but it's now I can use it directly. Okay. Okay. So now I've got R4 and R5 that are sitting right here. And I'm going to go back up here. And now let's watch what happens as I execute this. I'm going to first do the step and I'm going to say go. And R4 is loaded with 1234. So that was the first copy, right? So it's like, okay, that was great. And now what's going to happen is I'm going to put R4 into 2004. So I'm going to step it. And look what happened. 1234. It just arrived in memory. So that just put that into data memory. Let's go ahead and do the next one. So I'm going to go move what was at 2002, which was this address, into R5. And I see it right there, cafe. And now what I'm going to do is move R5 into R6. So I'm going to move that into R6. And voila, I did it. So this is awesome. <laughs> so it actually worked. And if I and so congratulations, you we're now looking at memory, memory, we're moving stuff every which way. If I went back here, and you said this is taking too long, I could absolutely do this, I could absolutely say, instead of moving it into the register first, go ahead and just do uh, at 2004 hex. And then down here, I could make this uh, not at and percent 2006 hex. And that will absolutely do the same thing. And, and I skipped the extra step of going into a register. But let's just look at that. Uh, let's just see that. So I'm going to go ahead and download again. So I go ahead and debug. And it's going to assemble it, link it, create the executable. And then it downloads it. And look, check out what's happening here. So notice that 2004 and 2006 are cleared out again. That's because when I downloaded it, it, it interpreted these directives that said, go ahead and clear those out and reserve them for me. It also downloaded 1234 into there. So now let's go ahead and go back up to our main program. I already got my breakpoint there. I'm going to run to it. Oh, no, did I do my breakpoint? Oh, that's step, sorry. <clears throat> I go ahead and hit run. It goes to the breakpoint and stops. And now I want to see this thing in one shot, copy the contents from to address 2000 into address 2004. So I'm going to step it. Boom, it did it. <laughs> and now look at copying address 2002 into 2006. I step it. Boom, did the exact same thing. All right, we did it. So we just used absolute addressing to move information around the computer system. Okay, so this was fantastic and we did it. And it showed us that number one, we now can add, we now can set up constants in data memory or program if you want to do. We can reserve information in data memory, but we can also move information in and out. So we got a little experience with directives. We got a little experience with uh, messing around with contents in data memory. But we also learned that it takes, you have to keep track of the addresses. So there's got to be a better way. And that's what you will see next. All right, as always, subscribe to my channel to stay up to date. See ya.